Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this video, I'll show you how to create this frequently asked questions section for your website. So let me show you how it works. Here we can see we have these three questions over here and whenever we click on any of these questions, we have the answer displayed over here and we also have this animation. And if you take a look at this uh, symbol over here, when we open this, we have the minus symbol and when we close this, we have the plus symbol. So that is the same with all the other questions as well. And we can even open multiple questions if you want. So this is what we're going to design in this video. So let's get started. All right, I have opened up a blank project and uh, let's go ahead and create the necessary files. So let's create an index.html file. Let's also create a CSS file. So we'll type style.css and we'll also need a JavaScript file. So we'll create one more file and we'll just name it main.js. Let's start with the index.html and uh, in VS Code we have this shortcut where you can just type exclamation and press tab and you'll have this basic HTML5 boilerplate code. Let's change this title to FAQs and uh, let's link our uh, CSS file over here. So just type link and press tab and in the href we'll type style.css and we'll also link our uh, JavaScript file over here. So in the body, just before the body ends, we'll type script colon src and in that we'll type main.js Let's start by creating a container division to hold everything. So we'll create a division with a class of FAQs container. And uh, in that we need to have a heading. So we'll give an H2 and we'll just tap frequently asked questions. Now we'll create a division to hold all the questions. So we'll create a division with a class of questions container. And uh, in that we'll have separate divisions for each of the questions. So for each of the questions, we will have a division with a class of content container. And uh, in that we will have two sections. One is the FAQ header and the other is the content. So we'll create a division with a class of FAQ header. And in the FAQ header, we will have an S3 and we'll just type the question over here. And we also need to have this uh, plus symbol over here and also the minus symbol. So we'll add both those symbols over here. So we'll create a span and we'll give it a class of open and we'll type plus over here and we'll create one more span and we'll give it a class of close and uh, here we will type minus. All right, this is the question. Now we need to type the answer over here. So for that, we'll create another division and we'll give it a class of content. And, uh, and that will just have a couple of paragraphs. I'll just copy this from here. And we'll just create one more paragraph for the next one. So here we can see the result of our code. This is how it looks right now. Let's copy this content container and uh, let's duplicate it two more times. And let's copy the other two questions over here. So the second question is this one. So let's copy this from here and I will paste it right here. And this is the answer. So let's copy this and paste it in the content. And we'll remove the second paragraph. All right, the third question is uh, this one right here. So let me just copy this over here. And uh, this is the first paragraph. And this is the second one. Right, so we have added all the questions and the answers. Now it's time for us to style it using CSS. So let's go to style.css. Let's start with the FAQs container division. So we'll type FAQs container. And uh, first of all, let's set a font family of Roboto and Sans Serif. Now to use this Roboto font family on your website, you have to first of all uh, get the link from Google Fonts. I already have it on my laptop, so it is displayed over here. But to add this to a real website, you have to also copy the link of the font in your style or your HTML file. 
it's really simple just go to fonts.google.com and uh, select a font and you'll get the link of the font and uh, how to use it you can just follow the instructions and uh, you'll be able to add the fonts to your website i also have a video on that so if you want you can watch that as well all right so let's set a maximum width to this and i will give it a maximum width of 700 pixels so since we are setting the maximum width it is not having the exact width of 700 if the window is greater than 700 we can see that it is uh, limited to a 700 pixel width but it can go below 700 and we'll also set it to the center so for that we will type margin 0 for top and bottom and auto for left and right now here we can see that our content is at the center all right now let's style the questions container so we'll type faqs container questions container and we'll give it a box shadow of 0 pixels 4 pixels 8 pixels negative 3 pixels and uh, for the color we will set it as rgba 0 0 0 and 0 0.3 so here we can see the box shadow is being displayed over here now let's style the h2 so we'll type faqs container h2 and uh, we'll give it a padding of 4 pixels top and bottom 32 pixels left and right and we'll also set a font size of 28 pixels now let's style the faq header section so this question and these two symbols are inside the faq header so let's target that so here we'll type faq's container faq header and first of all we'll set the display to flex so that all the elements will be one next to the other so we'll type display of flex here we can see we have this question over here and uh, the symbols at the right let's set a background color to the faq header so we'll set a background color of 03071e and uh, we'll set the color of the text to f1 f a e e right now let's center these symbols vertically so we'll type align items to the center and now we'll set these symbols to the right of uh, this faq header so we'll position it relative to the faq header division so in the faq header we can type position relative and uh, then we can set the position of these uh, symbols to absolute so let's style that faq's container faq header we'll type open and even for the close we have the same styling so let's copy this and paste it over here and we'll type close so we'll set the position to absolute and uh, let's set the right position to zero and uh, we'll give it a padding of zero pixels top and bottom 32 pixels left and right and we'll also set the font size to 22 pixels and we'll set the font weight to bold now let's also add some styles to this s3 so we'll type faq's container faq header s3 and uh, we will set a font size of 20 pixels and uh, we'll give it a padding of 0 top and bottom and 32 pixels left and right and when we hover over these faq headers we want to have the cursor as pointer so if we go to our design we can see that whenever we hover over these questions we have this cursor as pointer so let's go over here and we'll type cursor pointer and now we can see when we hover over this we have the correct pointer all right now let's style the content so we'll type faq's container dot content and for the content we will have a padding of zero pixels top and bottom and 32 pixels left and right and uh, we'll give it a background color of fdfffc and let's also add a line height of 2 All right now the next thing is that we want to have this content hidden by default so whenever we click on any of these questions we will add an active class to this content and when we have the active class we will show the content but by default it will be hidden so here we will type max height and we'll set the max height to 0 so now the content is hidden now the content has a height of 0 but we can still see that the content is displayed over here so we'll type overflow hidden now the content is not being displayed 
and whenever we add an active class to the content we'll add a maximum height to it so we'll type faqs container content dot active now here to keep in mind that you have to have no space between the content and the active because here we are saying that we want to have the content class as well as the active class on the same division so if you have that we will set a different max height so we'll set a max height of 600 pixels now here for the max height you have to set it to more than the largest content of your faqs now here we know that none of our content is greater than 600 pixels so we can safely set a max height of 600 pixels we'll also add a transition so we'll type transition and uh, we'll give it a timing of 500 milliseconds so whenever we add the active class it will have a smooth transition between the non-active and the active state now in the same way we want to have the active states for the plus and the minus icons if you go to the original design we can see that when we click on this uh, question the plus icon and the minus icon goes to the top and then comes back from the top so we have to add a transform to it as well so initially we'll set it a little higher so we'll type transform translate y and we'll set it to negative 8 pixels and we'll also set the opacity to 0 and we'll also give it a transition of 500 milliseconds now whenever we have the active classes for open or close we will have the opacity set to 1 and we'll also reset the translate so let's copy these two and paste it over here and here we will add dot active and uh, even for the close we will add dot active now here we'll set the opacity to 1 and transform translate y to 0 all right now let's add the active class to all the plus symbols so let's go to our html and uh, here with the open we'll also add a class of active and now we can see that the plus symbol is being displayed over here in the same way we will add the active class to all the open uh, icons all right now we have all uh, the plus icons being displayed over here and let's also add the active class to one of the contents and uh, let's see whether it works and now we can see when we have the active class to the first content it is being displayed over here and when we remove it it is not being displayed All right now everything is set up now we need to add javascript to add and remove the classes so we have already linked our javascript file over here so let's go to our main.js file and uh, let's reference some elements first of all first of all we need to reference all the faq headers so we'll type const and we'll type faq headers and we'll set it equal to document dot query selector all now here you have to keep in mind that you have to select all because we have multiple elements with the same class now in parenthesis we'll type faqs container faq header so this will store all the faq headers inside this constant right now let's add an event listener to all the headers so whenever the faq headers are clicked we want to execute something on our page so right now we have multiple faq headers so we have to use a for each loop for this so we'll type faq headers dot for each now here we need to create a callback function and we need to add two arguments over here so the first one will be for each of the faq headers for each of the faq headers we'll give it a variable name of header and we also have to give a variable name for the index so we'll tap i for the index and let's create this callback function over here now for each of the headers we need to add event listeners so let's type header dot add event listener for the click event and here we'll create a function so this is an arrow function now here we need to set the active class to the content of this question so if you go to our index.html file we can see this is the faq header and the next division is the content so we have to tell javascript that our content is the next element to the current one so for that you have to type header dot next element sibling so this will select the next element so this is the faq header now when we type header dot next element sibling it will select the content so now we want to add the active class to this content so here we'll type next element sibling dot class list dot 
toggle and we will give it a class of active. So what we are doing over here is that we are looping through each of the headers and we are giving them event listeners of click and whenever someone clicks on the header we are giving the active class to the next element sibling of the header. So I hope that you understood this. Now let's go ahead and check this out. So let's click on the first question and now we can see that the first content is being displayed. Let's click on it once more and it disappears. The same with all the other questions. Alright, now the last thing we need to do is uh, set the active classes to the open and the close symbols. So first of all, let's reference these elements. So we'll create a constant and we'll give it a class of open and we'll set it equal to header dot query selector dot open. Now here instead of document, we have typed header. So only the divisions with the open class inside the header will be selected. For the first one, we have just one span with the class of open. So it will be selected. So for each of the headers, the plus and minus symbols of those headers will be selected. And uh, let's copy this and uh, let's do the same for the close symbol. Right now before adding and removing the active classes to these two symbols, we have to check whether the content is active or not. And if the content is active, then uh, we have to remove the plus symbol and add the close symbol. And if the content is not active, then we have to remove the close symbol and add the open symbol. So here we'll tap if header dot next element sibling dot class list dot contains active. So here we are checking whether the content of any of these headers have the class of active. Now if it has the class of active, then uh, we have to remove the active class from the open. So we will type open dot class list dot remove and we'll type active. And we'll also add the active class to the close icon. So we'll type close dot class list dot add active or else we want to do the opposite. So we'll type open dot class list dot add active and close dot class list dot remove active. All right, now let's check this out. Let's click on the first header and we can see that the content is being displayed and we also have the close icon displayed over here. Let's click on it once more and we have the open symbol. So that's it with all the content and the questions. So that's basically it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.